Welcome everybody back to another, I don't know what to call these sorts of videos, I've done them before, uh, I did one in uh, Football Manager 2008, uh, I did one in uh, Football Manager, well I did a couple in Football Manager 2011 which I should have recently uploaded. Uh, this is another one from Football Manager 2011 and it is actually from the same save that I did my previous highlights video from. Well, we'll just call them highlights because it is highlights. It's uh, the highlights of a season or of a competition uh, that I'm talking about. Um, so basically, you will remember that in my last highlights video, I spoke about the first ever YouTube series I did, which was from a Football Manager 2011 series. I uploaded the games only because that's how I did it back then. That was the easiest way to do it back then. And then I got sacked. Uh, I took up the save five years later or whatever and got sacked. Well, uh, I did a bit of cheating, uh, I'll be honest. I wanted to continue to play that save as the team that sacked me. The team that sacked me was obviously St Johnston, uh, my favourite team. You'll find that in a lot of these saves I'll play St Johnston. I remember my Football Manager 2008 video I was playing a St Johnston. I've always played a St Johnston in Football Manager. I've played as other teams occasionally. I, I don't know why, I just get the biggest buzz out of playing as my favourite team. So there you go. Uh, you know, it means more if you if you know what I mean. I took up the save again. I basically retired. There's this feature in game where you can retire your manager, which basically just deletes the entire profile. Well, it doesn't delete the profile. You still get recorded in the history of the clubs you managed, but your profile's gone. You can't use it again. So I just retired my original profile, and then I created a new one here, as you can see, and I apply... Well, I didn't apply for this Johnson job. I don't know why I'm explaining this. The chances are, if you're watching this, you have some insight as to what Football Manager it is about. But in case you're not, you create a new profile, which you usually do at the start of a game when you load it up, uh, or you can do it partway through a game like I did, and you can choose to... Uh, immediately start as manager of a team and that's what I did. So I just basically got sacked and then on the same day created a new profile and joined the same team that sacked me, although I'm now using a different profile. So basically the record of wins and losses and all that from my previous uh, manager are wiped. And to give you a bit of a rundown of what happened, that was... So this was the first season that I spoke about in my last highlights video. This is the second season which didn't go so well and I also spoke about this in my last highlights video. Uh, and I got sacked. I got sacked after this game, this Dungeon United game here. You can see we played Dungeon United. We lost 3-1. So I got sacked after that. And then I created my new profile. Now, what I'm going to be doing is, I'm not going to be speaking about every single game that I played. Um, I'm not going to be showing highlights of every single game that I uh, took part in either. I'll give you a brief rundown of what happened uh, this season. But then the next season is where things get interesting. I don't do so well in the league, but something else happens monumental. Maybe not in the context of life or whatever, but uh, it's uh, something I've not really achieved that often. But anyway, we'll get to that later. So, uh, I got sacked. We were second bottom of the league. We, we just lost 3-1 to Dungeon United. Uh, and then I obviously created my new manager and took up the job again. So, part of the reason I wanted to do it this way was because I had a lot of good players in the team. A lot of young players that were really exciting. I had a, a new player that was about to get transferred in. This guy, Iago Aspas from Spain and so I decided that I just wanted to continue playing with the club and try and keep them in the division so yeah we were second bottom if we finished bottom we would get relegated uh, I wanted to try and avoid that so the question is did I avoid getting us relegated well the answer is yes uh, as you can see here these are the games I played towards the end of the season uh, as you can see we actually lost a ton um, we lost to Hibs 1-0, we lost 3-2 to Motherwell, we lost 3-1 to Kilmarnock, uh, we lost 2-0 to Aberdeen, we lost 5-0 to Rangers. I remember that game very well. I I can't remember what I did, but I do remember that we lost an early goal, and in fact, we just look at it here. Yeah, we lost an early, two early goals, three early goals, well, two early goals and a penalty that was relatively early and we just capitulated. I don't think my tactics were on point. I felt like, you know, it's Rangers, we're never going to win, let's just get the game over with. That was basically my mindset. Uh, but, things did improve. At this point, we were still second bottom. I don't think we were bottom quite yet. The gap between us and the bottom team was steadily getting smaller. And then, we finally won a game. We beat Heart of Lothian 1-0 at home, which was excellent. Got us three points on the board. The thing you've got to remember about uh, clashes at the bottom of the table is if you just get a string of wins together, it can, you know, lift you up the table a lot more. You see that in um, 
uh, football IRL like this season in England, uh, some of the bottom teams got a few wins and all of a sudden they went from being near the bottom to mid-table. So we just needed to fight uh, get a few wins and uh, obviously that's what we did. We beat Hearts 1-0 there, uh, we beat Partick Thistle 2-1, Liam Craig and Andy Jackson scored our goals in this game. We then lost to St Mirren uh, 3-2 but we bounced back, we got a 1-0 win over Aberdeen and then a 1-0 win over Inverness Cali and that was our season oh well we then lost 2-0 to Motherwell but that's kind of irrelevant all these wins I should add came after oh no one of them came before the split so the split happens here the split in the SPL where you get the top teams the bottom teams uh, playing each other so we got one win against Hearts before the split we then won three three of our five games after the split uh, I should say that the scorer in the Aberdeen game was oh it was an own goal a 19th minute own goal I, I, I only played the save last week I do not remember that goal let's watch it we can probably watch it here right that actually took longer to load up than I anticipated let's watch this um, so that's Mackay through to Davidson we've got Myrie Williams on the right hand side Ball across. Oh, that's so unlucky. <laughs> he just headed his hands there. So yeah, that was a last minute old goal that got us the three points there. That was that. So that was the season over. If you want to know where we finished. We finished third bottom, which isn't much better. But at least we, well, we did finish bottom. That's the main thing. As you can see, Partick Thistle got relegated on goal difference. They had a goal difference, seven goals inferior to Cali Thistle. So... In the Battle of the Thistles, it was Partick that went down as opposed to Inverness Cali. So, that was the season uh, which was 2011-2012. That was the season I took over as manager, the last few games of the season uh, when I saved us from relegation. Now, let's have a look at what happened in the season after. Spoiler alert, this is how the season ended. So, slight improvement from last year. Finished 10th last year, as I just said. This season we finished uh, 8th, so two places improvement. Cali Thistle did eventually go down, as you can see this season. They just weren't good enough to stay up. Um, but, we finished 8th, which is okay, but we could have done so much better, as you will see in a bit. Basically, we were in the top half of, half of the league for a lot of the, the season, which was good, but it's also disappointing that we eventually dropped out, ultimately, when it counted. So, bit of a shame there. Uh, Celtic won the league, although that's... Nothing new, although I think this is the first time they've won the league. Rangers won it the 2011-2012, and Hearts won it 2010-2011. So yeah, this is the first time Celtic have won the league on this save. There is a big, big, big moment from this season. I'm not just sharing this season for no reason whatsoever. There's a big moment that I'm going to be speaking about, uh, and we'll just get to that now. So, in pre-season, as you can see, we won all but one of our games. Uh, the reason for this was because uh, I picked easy teams, because I figured that one of the failings from the previous season, when we almost got relegated, one of the failings was uh, our morale was low all the time, and morale is very, very important in Football Manager. Your players have to have really good morale to perform well. So I thought, we'll play against the easy teams, they'll get loads of goals, they'll be happy, they'll be scoring, they'll be enjoying their football, and we'll start the season on fire. That was sort of true, so we won all of our games. As you can see, they were against ridiculously easy teams. No disrespect to any of these teams, but they're not top-class opposition. That's the point. They were uh, easy for us to beat. So anyway, we beat them all 3-0, 6-0, 4-0, etc, etc. We only conceded about three goals over the course of preseason. Then it gets the first game. First game of the season against Cali Thistle, who eventually go down, and we draw 1-1. I did say I'm not going to go into these uh, games in depth, but... As you can see, it took a, well, a last gasp equaliser with five minutes to go uh, for us to actually get the points. We were up against it. Ross Toklid scored early for them, and then Chris Miller drew us level. Now, that is key. Chris Miller scored. Chris Miller is a midfielder. One thing I should say, before the season started, uh, as you can see, let's see, history, we actually sold, or I sold, Zavon Hines to Watford. Watford came in, offered us... Uh, I can't remember how much they offered. I decided to try and get the price up to 600,000. They accepted, so I got 600,000 for Zavin Hines. Zavin Hines had played one season for us. He scored two goals all season. Uh, ironically, one of the goals he scored came in like one of the games that occurred after I got sacked originally. I got sacked, then came back, and then he scored again. So two goals is not good, and he's a good striker as well. And that is proven by the fact that in his season for Watford, his first season, he got 23 in, I think it was the championship. Yeah, in the championship, Watford finished, like, seventh, and he got 23 goals. I just must suck at this game so badly, because I could not get him to score at all. So he scored two goals for us all season, which is awful. Absolutely awful. Anyway, 
besides the point, ignore the cup games, okay? We're only going to be talking about the league games. So, we're doing with Cali. We then drew our first four games against Cali, Kilmarnock, St Mirren and Hibs. Arguably, we should be getting some wins from those, with all due respect. But, three draws, uh, four draws, sorry, then we lost to Celtic. After a 0-0 draw with Hearts, we then got our first win of the season against newly promoted Falkirk, a 2-1 win. We scored two goals early through Derek Williams, who was on loan from Aston Villa. And... Uh, and Chris Miller also scored uh, on 21 minutes. I should add, Derek Williams is on loan from Aston Villa. The reason for that was because uh, Aston Villa, obviously a Premier League team, not in real life, but in this game, they're a Premier League team in England, a top team, and we were basically made their feeder club, so we've got to... They can send players on loan to us for free, but they also get first option in players that we're about to sell. So imagine one club bids for one of our players, we then uh, have to accept the same amount from Aston Villa if they so wish. That's basically how it works for those that don't know. Um, so he was on loan from us. He scored first in that game. But then, Drew with Aberdeen, lost to Motherwell. Did we beat Rangers? And then we beat Rangers. I didn't even know. Andy Jackson scored. He's a striker. He scored with 83 minutes to go. Completely forgot about this game. And that's key. So Andy Jackson, a striker, scored. I'm going to explain why that's key to our season. So, we had four strikers in our team last year. I can point them all out at the minute. We had, let's see, not that guy, not that guy, but Stevie B. Let's see how many goals he got last season. Uh, that's this season. Last season, oh, he got no goals. Let's see, who should we check next? Collins John. So, you remember, you might remember him. He was in my previous video. He played for us. This is his fourth season with us. He scored a few goals in his first two seasons. How many did he score last season? Oh, none. None at all. Uh, then we had this guy, uh, Kerlon, who is a Brazilian player who actually is famous for doing this trick in real life where he balances a ball on his head and runs along with it. Uh, he was a hot prospect in real life back in the day. Somehow I've ended up with him in game. I think he was a free agent, so we just quickly... Yeah, he was at Inter Milan. <laughs> That's a big, big fall from grace, playing in Serie A with Inter Milan and then going all the way to Scotland. But there you go, he plays for us now. But does he play well? How many goals did he score? One. Just the one. Then we've got Andy Jackson. He was our fourth striker. How many goals did he score last season? Uh, let's have a look, let's have a look. Two. So of our four strikers, they got a combined total of three goals between them. Three goals for four strikers. That's less than an average of one goal per striker. That's the concern. The concern is, and obviously we know about Zavin Hines, he did not score at all. Well, he scored two goals, but two goals, and then goes in bags like 20 or something in the uh, championship down in England. It is such a calamity that our strikers just cannot find the net. But the saddest thing is, you'll remember I spoke about uh, this guy, Derek Williams. He's a centre-back. How many goals did he score for us? Seven. He got over double the amount of goals our entire strike force got combined. I just cannot get our strikers to score. Like, my biggest fear this season is that our strikers won't score, but then none of our other players will. As I said, Derek Williams, he got seven goals, uh, even though he was a centre-back. I think most of those would have been from corners. Chris Miller, he got... How many goals did he get? He got nine, which is absolutely insane. Um, then, if we go to our other players, Liam Craig, this guy's an absolute beast. Uh, he got 12. Uh, 16. 16 in all competitions. He was our top scorer. Uh, from midfield, he was he played midfield. He played an inside forward sometimes on the left hand side, but he got sixteen goals. Uh, and then there was another guy, Kevin Mensa, our Danish uh, attacking midfielder. He went and scored ten. So we're mainly relying on our attacking midfielders and our midfielders and even our centre backs for getting goals, which. I don't know what to think about that, because at least we're getting goals, but it'd be nice if our strikers weighed in with a few goals, and it's not like they didn't have chances, they did, they just never took them. Where were we? We spoke about the Rangers game, Andy Jackson got one of only three goals for our strikers that season, uh, we then beat Hibbs, we beat Cali, we beat Cali 2-0, our biggest win so far, there we go, Chris Miller and Derek Williams again on 31 minutes and 50 minutes. We then lost two in a row before getting a 5-0 victory against St Mirren, which came absolutely out of the blue. Keep in mind, we'd only won four games in the league all season, and none of them would won by more than two goals. Then all of a sudden, boom, here we go, 5-0. Oh yeah, I remember this. So basically, my strikers were struggling to score, and I thought to myself, right, what should I do now? And then I was like, you know what? Not all formations need strikers. So I thought, let's cut the strikers out. As you can see here, uh, St Mirren over here have Abby Obi and Higdon up front in a 4-4-2 classic. Then over here, I've got no strikers. I've only got attacking midfielders. No strikers. So I decided to use that formation. I think this was the first time I used it. Boom. I won 5-0 and I thought, yes, I found my formation. This is my my formation for, for the season. And as you can see here, uh, Liam Craig scored the first goal after halftime, admittedly. But 
he still scored on 49 minutes. He then added to his tally, getting his second and our, our second on 54 minutes. Steven Anderson then scored on 61 minutes. Uh, Chris Miller scored on 68 minutes. And this guy here, whose name I will probably fail to pronounce, Abdul Yakinu Eddy, he scored in 75 minutes to complete the route. 5-0. Completely insane. Uh, second game in a row, we won. 2-1 against Hearts. Chris Miller scored again on 19 minutes. And then Kevin Mensah got one of his 10 goals of the season uh, on 33 minutes. As you can see here, I used the classic no-striker formation, this 4-6-0 formation, or 4 6 triangle formation kind of thing. Uh, I don't know how, what you would call it. So that was fine. We won two of the games we used that formation in. Then we played Celtic. And for some reason I thought, hey, let's use the same formation. <laughs> and we ended up losing 3-2. Um, we went 3-0 down inside 35 minutes. And the only reason we got two goals was because I think I changed the tactic. I can't remember what I changed it to. I probably gave us a striking option up front. But we ended up scoring with an own goal on 55 minutes. And uh, Kevin Mensa then scored on 72 minutes. So that was unfortunate. And obviously not all tactics are unbeatable. And they're not unbeatable for every team. You can't just use one tactic throughout the whole season. And expect to uh, expect things to go swimmingly. Uh, we then had a 0-0 draw against Aberdeen. Lost two games in a row. We then got our first win. In about five games against Rangers of all people. Uh, so keep in mind we had beaten Rangers 1-0 previously. Uh, away from home. This one was at home. Uh, so we won 2-1. Uh, as you can see here, Kyle Lafferty scored in 31 minutes. Uh, but then Steven Anderson equalised with 15 minutes to go. And then deep into stoppage time at the end of the game, Liam Craig scored the winner. One of his, I think, 16 or 17 strikes of the season to get us the three points. That is unreal. So we managed to beat the second top team for the second time in the league. And that set us off on a decent run. We then drew the next game against Cali, beat St. Mirren, beat Kilmarnock. And then it was back to the bad run. Uh, so as you can see, we go through uh, phases where we have lots of good games. So at the start of the season, we only lost one in like, I don't know, nine. We lost one in nine games. Then we went through phases where we lost a lot or failed to win in a lot in a row. And this was a phase where we only won one in about 12 games. And that was against Motherwell who we won 2-1 against. Ross Forbes scored in 18 minutes, but then Kevin Mensah equalised on 43 minutes, and Derek Williams scored the winner on 82 minutes. But yeah, as you can see, lost to Kilmarnock, lost to Celtic, drew with Hearts, lost to Aberdeen, lost to Falkirk. And this is coming towards the end of the season. So when I said we could have done so much better, this is what I was talking about. We then lost to Rangers, who beat us for the first time that season. And then we drew with Dundee United. And this is key. So we drew with Dundee United. As you can see, Dundee United scored a last minute equaliser. We scored in the first minute. Liam Craig, 1-0. I'll take that. Three points, no problem. And then they've ruined the party. As they scored late on to give them a point And reduce our three points to one point. And what that meant was... You won't be able to see it now. But what that meant was... We went from being in the top half of the table before the split to the bottom half. So had we won that game, we would have finished sixth minimum. But we lost it and we went into the bottom half and had to play the bottom half teams. And like, even if you finish in the bottom half, you cannot go above sixth place. As you'll see here, for example, Motherwell have got 53 points. They finished seventh. Kilmarnock finished sixth, even though they've only got 48 points. That's just how it works. Um, so if Dungeon United hadn't scored there, we would have been top half. That's how close it was. But the thing is, for me, it doesn't come down to just that moment. We could have won many more games here if our strikers had taken their chances, if we'd even turned a draw into a win or a loss into a draw. You know, anything can happen. So we went into the last uh, five games of the season. We ended up drawing three. Uh, we lost one against Aberdeen, which was a bit disappointing because they went on to finish uh, seventh. As you'll see, we ended up finishing three points behind them. And we won one against uh, Falkirk, who finished second bottom. As you can see there, William Craig and Stephen Anderson got our goals after they took the lead. That was the league season over. A bit mundane, but that's not the key thing. Let's have a look at the Scottish Cup. Oh yeah, we lost 1-0 to Dudge United. Fantastic. Well done to them. Um, we lost a lot to Dudge United, actually. But the duel in the crown... Is here the League Cup? Spoilers: We won the League Cup. Why is this monumental? Um, I might have won this in the past, but.
but not for many, many years, and I've certainly not won the League Cup on this game. Um, and like just generally, I can win the league. I've won the league before, not this league. Well, I have won this league, uh, the Premier League before with Saints, but I won the first division a lot back in the days when we were in the first division, and I played those games when you know when we started in the first division, like at the start of the game. Uh, I won a lot of those, but the point is. Knockout competitions are a lot harder to win in this game because you got to win every game. You might remember in the last highlights video, one of the clips I showed was um, us going out on penalties to Aberdeen. That shows how difficult it is. You need to win every game, even if it's on penalties. You need to win them uh, these games to win the cup. And here we have it. We won the cup. Uh, not only did we win the cup, we never conceded a goal at all in this uh, competition. We also beat both halves of the old firm. We beat Rangers and we beat Celtic. And then we uh, we also beat both sides of the new firm, for that matter. The new firm being Aberdeen and Dundee United, although that's kind of a 1980s tag and is probably irrelevant in the 21st century, but there you go. We also beat Dumbarton, who are a decent footballing outfit, although they're just not of the same calibre as these four teams here. Uh, and yeah, it was our only victory against Dundee United. But I will give you the story from the very beginning. I want this to be the main focus of the video. So, winning the League Cup. How did it happen? I'll tell you how. So, first game was on the 28th of August. So, kind of near the start of the season. It was the League Cup uh, second round we get entered into. Uh, for those that don't know, in the Scottish League Cup, the top sides, like the SPL sides, or the Premiership sides as it is now, they get a bye, so they get put in the second round. And if you finish really hard in the league, I think you get put in the third round. Uh, but the point is, it's only the low, the lesser teams uh, or the lower ranked teams that have to play the first round. So we got a bye straight into the second round. I should say the League Cup actually has a different format these days in real life. It, it It's more like a group system, more like the World Cup or the Champions League. Uh, maybe not in like quality, but in format it is. Anyway, in this, uh, this game, however... It's just a straight knockout tournament, no leagues. First game against Dumbarton was a 3-0 victory for us. Uh, this was away in Dumbarton. Uh, we won 3-0. Martin Canning scored on 27 minutes. This was followed up just before halftime by a Liam Craig penalty. And then Liam Craig scored on 50 minutes to complete the scoring. So a comfortable 3-0 win. Uh, no less than I would expect. These games are usually the ones at the start of the season that you play your youngsters in or whatever. Um, for those that are wondering, yeah, there's <laughs> I played so many weird formations. That was the formation I played uh, this time. As you can see, it's uh, it's a pretty strong lineup. To be fair, I played a lot of my key players: Liam Craig in the centre of the field, um, attacking fullbacks. I would assume because otherwise this would have no width. And uh, Collins John up front, who got zero goals. I'm still salty about that. Then in the next round. Came up against Aberdeen, which is significant because if, as as I said last year, last season in this game, got knocked out by Aberdeen on penalties. This time things were different. Um, as you can see, it did go to extra time, but Timothy Van der Mullen, who is incidentally also a centre back, uh, ended up getting the goal for us uh, in the 94th minute to win us the tie. Then obviously we held out. We didn't have the best of the play. It looks like Aberdeen had more shots and more possession, but all that counts is number of goals in the end. So we got through to the uh, next round as a result of that win. Then things start to get very, very challenging because we got drawn against Rangers. Uh, usually when you draw Rangers or Celtic in this cup competition in Football Manager, you're, you're usually thinking, all right, this will be good revenue. Apart from that, nothing else good is going to come from this <laughs> because usually it means uh, we exit the tournament. We won 4-0, which was unreal. I don't even know what formation did I play. Okay, I played a pretty... I think that was a more defensive formation. But we won 4-0. Liam Craig scored uh, on seven minutes to open the scoring. Then they scored an own goal. Sergio Gilleur scored an own goal in 22 minutes. I'm sorry, I can't pronounce the second name. Uh, then Liam Craig doubled, or doubled his goal tally, tripled our advantage on... 27 minutes, so half an hour into the game, we're already three goals ahead. And then uh, Chris Miller completed the scoring in the second half on 55 minutes. And the thing was, it wasn't even difficult. It was actually so easy. You can see um, by the match stats here, like we had 19 shots, 10 on target, more possession. This was at Ibrox, by the way. Absolutely insane. I don't know how. I don't know what, like, and also, if I could just show you this. 
We won that game against Rangers in the quarter-final. We then lost to Motherwell. We then played Rangers again, and we won again. So Rangers just had a bad patch against us there, and of course they lost us earlier in the season. Like, I don't get... I, I don't understand what's up with them. Maybe they were just, yeah, on a bad run of form. But either way, I was caring. We got 4-0 win. We're into the semi-finals. I mentioned last time that the semi-final stage is where things really get interesting, because it's down to four teams. Interest in the tournament uh, begins to... Uh, rise, your club gets more press, more notice, more recognition, I guess, for being in it. And the Europa League final has just kicked off IRL, but that's irrelevant. <laughs> um, I guess I'll be watching this as I record this video. Um, so, we got Celtic, which I think the other choice was, I think it was Dungeon United versus Hearts was the other tie. Hearts actually finished near the bottom of the table. Well, they weren't near the bottom of the table at the time. So we kind of got the unlucky side of the draw. We got Celtic, they were top of the league, they were flying. I pretty much gave us no chance. I did not think we would, you know, even take it to extra time. Yet again, though, my team proved me wrong. Uh, it was 0-0 at half-time. Things looked pretty even. And then Carlon scored his only goal of the season on 56 minutes uh, to put us in the lead. And then we held on and Derek Williams netted with 10 minutes to go to give us a two-goal advantage and to send us into the a National Cup final. First time I've been in the National Cup final in ages. It's been so long since I've been to a National Cup final in Football Manager. Um, partly because I don't or haven't played football managers much over the last uh, four or five years. Uh, but the point is we're there. Super happy about that. That was a formation we played. Doesn't really tell you the whole story, but doesn't need to. All that you need to know is we won 2-0 against Celtic. Uh, and then we faced Dungeon United, which, to give you a bit of context, there you go, first game against Dungeon United, lost 2-1. Craig Conway, David Goodwillie scored for them. Kevin Mensa scored for us. Then our next game, so basically the quarterfinals happened before Christmas, the semi-finals and the final happened after Christmas. So Dungeon United had beaten us in November, uh, we then played them twice. Uh, you remember I showed the Scottish Cup uh, game, we played them in the Scottish Cup and lost 1-0, as I showed off here. Uh, we actually played them in the league game immediately before that, and we lost 2-0 in what was probably the worst game of the season, or certainly one of the worst games of the season, as you can see, got absolutely outplayed. I was thinking to myself, there is no way, well that's why I wanted Hearts so much, there's no way we're going to win this. We'd scored one goal against them all season, got creamed by them eh, on multiple occasions. The question is, how did we win? There were several factors, you could write an essay on this, eh, you know, what factors caused us to win this game, eh, but I'll run through them quickly. So first of all, I can't show it now because obviously the squad's different, but a lot of their key players were injured. So David Goodwill, who scored against us, he was injured. Craig Conway, who also scored against us, he was injured. They had about five or six injuries at the time. And I, I actually saw this prior to the final. And I thought to myself, excellent. This is exactly what I was wanting. Um, so they were all injured. Um, so they had to play a weakened team. Not too weak. It was still a strong team, but not as strong as they would have liked it to, to have played, I'm sure. Then, the other major factor that contributed to our win, one of their players got sent off <laughs> 23 minutes into the game. Um, yeah, so yeah, as you'll see here, uh, Danny Errols got sent off. You can watch the entire clip here. And to be honest, it was when this happened, I was like, yes. Oh, look at that. That was, that was that's a definite red card. <laughs> you can see he knows it. He just goes up waving his hands at the ref, but no, he gets sent off. And at this point, I thought... Yes, it's mine to lose. Like if I if I lose if I throw this away now, I'm truly the worst at this game ever. Um, what formation did I play? Classic four five one or four three three or whatever you want to call it. Um, but Chris Miller got two goals, one on fifty eight minutes, and another one on seventy one minutes, and that effectively handed or didn't effectively it did one hundred percent hand me the trophy and my team, of course, because it wasn't just me. I'm just a manager. Uh, but yeah, we won the league cup. Which is fantastic. And I know there's all this talk, well, certainly in some parts of Scotland there's talks that the League Cup's a lesser cup, which arguably it is, but it's it's a trophy. If you're you know, why play for a trophy if you if you don't want to win it? Of course I wanted to win it, so we won it. Do I think I'll repeat that this season? Probably not, but you know, at least I've got this. I've got this uh, in my locker now. I've won a trophy on Football Manager twenty eleven. <laughs> so yeah, that was pretty cool. Um probably one of my best moments in Football Manager, I would say, just because, well, look, for starters, we never conceded a goal. We beat 
four of the best sides in the country. We also never played at home. Three away games and then the end stands for neutral, for those that don't know, so, or national, for National Stadium. So that was played at Hampden Park, those two games, the semi-final and the final. And then obviously we went all the way and won it, which is absolutely fantastic. So that is that. Uh, to give you a preview for this coming season, which I may or may not do highlights of it, depending on how well it goes. Um, but we are protected to finish ninth, which isn't too bad, like ninth is here, so we're not like the whipping boys, we're not the team that everyone expects to be, but we're not going to do that well according to the media. And my aim for this season is to actually get my strikers scoring. Have I made any transfers? Let's have a look. I've signed three players, so this guy got sent on loan from Aston Villa, a goalkeeper, which is fantastic because I really uh, genuinely did need a goalkeeper. Signed two players from TP... TP... Mazembe, who are a Congolese team from the Democratic Republic of Congo. We signed this guy, Cardo Kabongo. That totally didn't take me multiple attempts to pronounce, but we signed him. Striker. Kind of slow, but he's more of a target man. Kind of tall, good at heading the ball, pretty strong. Jean-Claude Nsumbo. Uh, we signed him as well. He's more of a poacher, kind of a pacey striker. So we signed those two. They're only 18, or this guy's 18 anyway. The other guy is 18 as well. Um, so the aim really is to, I'm trying to build up youth in this save, I'm trying to, um, you know, just go through the youth system of this team and other teams, sign the best, well not the best players, but the players I can get my hands on and I want to turn them into uh, good players, that's really what I'm trying to do here, which might have an adverse effect because if they're too young, like have a look at this, so these are my young players. We've got Alan Hutton, who's uh, obviously a new gen. New gen is obviously a fake player, for those that don't know. Fake player who they've got to generate into the game. He's actually progressing pretty well. He's got a uh, 1.5 star current ability, a uh, 3.5 star potential. We've then got John Gallagher, who played a lot last season. He played, well, he made 13 starts, 6 off the bench. Um, and he, as you can see, he's also 1.5 star current ability, 3.5 potential. Defensive midfielder, can't play centre-back or centre of uh, midfield. As you can see, he's got decent stats. He's progressing at an acceptable rate, apart from his composure there. Uh, but you can see his stats here, they're pretty decent. He's only 18 as well. Uh, then obviously we've got the Cardo Cabongo guy here. He's 1 star current ability, 3 star potential. Then Jean-Claude Nsumbo, uh, 1 star current ability, 4.5 star potential, which is fantastic. Then we've got this guy, Chris Moffat, one star potential, three and a half star, oh no, sorry, one star current ability, three and a half star potential. Decent stats there. He's a centre back, although he can play right back. Then we've obviously got Stevie Bay, who's two and a half star current ability, four star potential. He did not do that well last season, which I was very disappointed about, especially because the first season I was in charge, or certainly the first season of the save, he got four goals, second season he got five, so he's progressing well. Then he goes against none. So I really, really hope he scores this season. Uh, I don't want to just ditch him because he could progress a lot better than he is. And it might just be by tactics. I don't know. The final youngster I want to draw your attention to is this guy, Simeon Gasparini. So he was another foreign youngster who I signed from... Well, I did sign him from Roma. He was a free. He was a free transfer. He didn't have a club, was unattached. And I thought, you know, he looks okay. I'm going to sign him. And he played, as you can see, he's progressing well. He played a bunch last season. Uh, yep, 12 starts, 2 sub. He did okay, I think. I think he played in the, yeah, he played in the League Cup final. Basically, my point is this, I've got a nucleus of youth players who maybe aren't up to the standard at the minute, but I'm hoping to get them there. And my aim is really to just progress them into being first team players. And that's, that's kind of why I you know, added a new manager and took up this job again was because I want these youngsters to progress as much as it is cheating. It's just the way I want to play the save. Uh, football manager's good like that. It allows you to do these things, uh, play the game in whatever way you want. It's got the editor, it's got the in-game editor. Uh, it's very diverse. It's very um, custom. You can customise it a lot. Also, in my under-19 squad, I've got a few players that aren't, like, they have they don't have huge star potentials, but two and a half in my opinion, isn't too bad. So I'm hoping to try and break them into the first team squad and hopefully improve that uh, because I think the potential ability uh, rating can fluctuate. It can go down or up depending on how well a player does. So, you know, and this is basically a guesstimate. Yeah, a guesstimation, if that's a word. If it's not, it is now. Um, but this is a guesstimation of how good the assistant thinks the player's going to be. And so the assistant might reconsider that later on if they see more potential in the player. So, 
My aim is to try and break these guys into the team. Uh, unfortunately, everyone else is utter trash, but don't tell them I said that. They're not real players, so there you go. Anyway, that is the end of this video. Just want to thank everybody for uh, watching. It's been fun. Uh, will I be doing more Football Manager videos in the future? Maybe. Depends on uh, how much I play the game. I've been playing a lot lately. I've been really enjoying it again, which is good. Uh, and yeah, I've got the Europa League final to watch. And it's Marseille v Atletico. And uh, I think Atletico will win. But by the time this goes up, you'll know who who's won if you are interested. Anyway, thank you. Take care. And I will catch you later.